Fun thanks to CPAT for uh, organizing this event and uh, of course to Mr. Akshan Keri and Mr. Wood for uh, educating us and uh, putting things in perspective and uh, certainly not to forget uh, uh, the, the office bearers of CPAT as well as uh, Ms. Sadia Sajid and Mr. Bukhari. Now, uh, I think when we talk about COVID-19, it's, uh, it's a very, like, I would say, unprecedented dilemma that we are faced with. It's uh, a problem for which, uh, frankly, no one was prepared. So there's no playbook, per se. Uh, offhand, I can say, in Pakistan, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan's government, although they got a lot of flack for it initially, they chose to go for a smart lockdown rather than shutting down everything like our neighbors did. And uh, that was quite beneficial. Again, there's no one size fits all solution. Now, what do we do? You know, this is, uh, I remember I was in New York during the food, finance and uh, fuel crisis in 2008 I, and I asked uh, a very, you know, a big time uh, economics professor uh, what should be done and he said, uh, well, it was a trillion dollar question. So what do you do? So uh, a word of caution in this regard, I mean, of course, I told him that uh, you Americans have taught economics to the rest of the world and if you don't know, then uh, we are all doomed. You know. But nevertheless, uh, we saw uh, it in the case of Japan, for example, you know, Abenomics. Uh, should government intervene? Should they not intervene? Should Obama have rescued uh, General Motors? Should he not have, you know? So there, there'll always be two opinions. One is survival of the fittest, you know, people who are not performing well should be allowed to uh, sort of uh, fritter away. Uh, but uh, then uh, some are too big to, to falter. When Lehman Brothers sank, then it was imperative to uh, save General Motors. Now, it's difficult to, you know, uh, sort of uh, just juxtapose those uh, things on, let's say, the Canadian situation. But before I go any further, I can't uh, uh, help complimenting uh, what uh, the governments have done here, you know, at all levels. So rather than telling the citizen to basically fend for themselves and to say, well, uh, there's nothing that we can do, a lot has been done. Obviously, more needs to be done. And these are like big questions, the proverbial 800 pound gorillas in the room. Uh, should, uh, and this is something that of course, uh, influential people like Mr. Shantiri can uh, pull off and uh, all of you, you know, using your weight as, as business leaders. Uh, what about, I mean, can, can Hydro Canada or uh, let's say the electricity companies, can they, um, maybe not charge people for some time. Uh, I'm sure they have enough revenues, but I can't presume to tell them what to do. Uh, it's an extraordinary situation. Should we be giving uh, larger uh, bailouts to people? You know, so, but then again, I mean, it's also a question of tempering expectations. Uh, obviously, when people are used to a certain like inflow of cash, uh, and which is in millions, of course, it is uh, uh, quite high by developing country standards. So then all of a sudden when that dries up and uh, you're worried about overheads, what do you do about the employees? If you, uh, you can't really, you know, put them in hibernation and then start again. You know, how do you put your business together again when the vaccine has been discovered? So those are challenges. Now, uh, again, uh, I personally think that uh, the excellent is the enemy of the good. So on one hand, we have those uh, solutions which emanate from scholars and, you know, Harvard and I'm sure University of Toronto and uh, a lot of professors and economists and all that. So obviously you always find a wish list. This is what ought to be done. You know, the, the, this is the money that we need. And then you have skeptics who would say that, you know, the deficit is increasing and 
we are uh, sinking ourselves under debt, what will happen? You know, how do we deal with China? Should we get tough on them? Should we not get tough on them? Should we be more pragmatic or should we be more sentimental? So because obviously uh, there's a, uh, Canada is not a monolithic society. There are many voices, there are many shades of opinion. Now, so the basic thing is what can we do? What can be done? And uh, should we be trying to heal the whole thing or can we do it, let's say, selectively? Now, I'm not advocating any nationalism in this sense that, okay, we should only worry about Pakistani origin people or, uh, you know, people of a certain extraction. But then uh, something uh, can be done. Like, for example, uh, CPAC, uh, I'm sure, has uh, something on it. Or if not, it can be developed. Like, do we have a list of uh, list of businesses, you know, small businesses? I've heard a figure 6,200 in Ottawa. How many of them are owned by, you know, or, or what are the classifications? Okay. And which areas are the hardest hit? You know, those who cannot, uh, if you have a restaurant, you cannot feed people virtually. So obviously, you have to get the food to them. How do you do that? Because uh, then you're also afraid that if you end up infecting somebody, you're going to be slapped with a with a huge fine so then uh, maybe it's time to get together with the uh, experts you know food safety experts and uh, how do we go about it uh, how do we ensure people like hypothetically let's say mr mirza for a while uh, uh, i'm sure he's selling a lot of uh, palatial houses so if he gets tired of that and he goes into food business now what, what does he do how does he get the food to Ms. Uh, uzma khan you know Uzma Khan is afraid, I don't want to get COVID, I'd rather cook at home. So how do you uh, assure her, you know? So then there's a huge onus on how do you ensure that your people are maintaining social distancing, they're wearing masks, they're, they are, uh, you know, using sanitizer. Or, for instance, if there is a coalition of restaurants, rather than trying to pull each other down, the other day, you know, there was some uh, association of Indian restaurants uh, calling upon uh, the authorities to shut down kitchens which are operating from home. And then some people oppose that. You know, what do people do? Should they just, uh, you know, go and bury themselves in the snow? They can't do that. So uh, if people cannot come to the restaurant, if it's a problem, then why don't you go to them? You know, why don't you just put together some food trucks? and have designated areas. Mr. Al Shantiri can uh, get you the permission, designated areas. That we'll have food trucks, you can come, you can call us in advance, give us the order, we'll have it ready. You know, you pay by just that tap thing, so that money is not uh, exchanging hands uh, and minimizing the the possibility of uh, virus. Okay. Mr. Shurya Bashir uh, is, uh, you know, uh, into, uh, let's say, the carpet business. Now people have to come, they have to have a feel. Uh, perhaps salespeople should be going to people's homes, you know, showing them the stuff. I mean, it's a climb down because you're used to operating at a certain scale and you cannot reproduce it at the domestic level. So uh, if you have a gym, okay, now a gym cannot be operated because people will, you know, hold the machine and get the COVID and then uh, you'll be thrown in jail or whatever. So, uh, people can go to, you know, like the homes where four or five people, personal trainers, that okay, you can't come to the gym, we'll come and, you know, help you exercise or something. So, out of the box thinking. Now, again, it won't be ideal. Uh, millions of dollars will not be uh, coming in. But with some, you know, relenting by hydro uh, people and the electricity people and some uh, uh, money coming in, till we tide it over, hopefully, uh, we might get a vaccine by next year. Although, I mean, some skeptics are suggesting, I, I don't want to go into details, but I have uh, reason to believe that some organizations have told their employees that the third phase of total normalcy may be a bit far away, maybe even more than a year. So you have to brace yourself for that. It's not like if I just survive a month or so, then I'll be out and, you know, watching no time to die and enjoying myself and all that. So reduced expectations, tempered expectations. Uh, total normalcy may be far away, but a lot can be done uh, within the thing. So, and then how do we get the information to the people? 
Websites can be very useful. You have a good website uh, for CPAC. Although when you Google it, it's a bit dated because uh, we still have Mr. Siddiqui on the cover page. He is now a High Commissioner in Bangladesh. He is long gone from Toronto. So perhaps time to update it. And uh, give people links and make uh, you know groups. People can subscribe. I'm not saying that you go from door to door and collect information. But you say, okay, here's a little form, less complicated than what you have to fill out for government assistance and give us your coordinates a name of uh, owner this and that this is what we supply in these are the discounts we are offering you know because business uh, things are being sold you know uh, amazon is a prime example uh, how their revenue has gone up and i'm sure we are all we are all utilizing that and uh, then uh, delivery services it's a, it's a new uh, business that can be done. If you have waiters who are now redundant, maybe they can go into delivery, you know, getting stuff to people, uh, getting them groceries, but then making sure they are sanitized and they, do, they don't cause illness and all that. So uh, these are, I mean, ju just some thoughts, obviously not to second guess what, uh, you know, the the macro economists would say or you know because everybody obviously has a take on that but again i mean just to just a word of caution that it's an unprecedented uh, crisis uh, this is something which is uh, frankly it has confounded everybody and uh, there has been uh, and you can be quite i would say happy that we have not seen that kind of uh, devastation in canada it's uh, a bit insensitive to draw comparisons, but if you see how other economies have uh, suffered, how the societies have suffered, you know, from death toll and, you know, the economic cost, and frankly, in many cases, uh, government apathy, you know, I mean, um, here you are, the virus is here, and you're infected, and uh, go find for yourself, you know, you haven't seen that in Canada. And uh, so that's, I think, uh, to a great credit. And then it's a great credit to people like you, you know, who have the sensitivity and who have the warmth of heart to think about others, you know, to not just uh, lie back and relax and, you know, or get into depression. And uh, which again, which, which is another aspect. I mean, uh, people also need uh, emotional support in these trying times. I think it's important to connect to people, to remain connected with them. And in that, I think people from uh, who hail from our part of the world have a certain, let's say, uh, practice of, uh, you know, being more engaged and, you know, being used to more crowded household and, uh, households and so on and so forth. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these are just some uh, disjointed thoughts. Uh, thank you all very much and uh, God bless you. Keep up the good work and inshallah we will remain engaged with you. Thank you very much.